Hello, you're listening to Somewhere on the Rainbow. I'm Thomas, and I'm here with Kat Cody from Pingerton Academy. And today we'll be discussing their identity and a few things related to their identity, like gender assumption. So Kat, what do you most closely identify as and what are your pronouns? Well, I identify as non-binary, but also also identify as demigirl in aspect because I feel um, there I have a lot of femininity that I identify with in that retrospect, but like a lot of that is pretty um, is like kind of like intimate for me, I feel like. So when I like see people who I don't know that well in public, I really like to just identify as non-binary and my pronouns are just they, them. All right. And did anything spur the possibility that you were non-binary slash demigirl? Um, just like anything, like sort of like a movie or something or something that's like a kick in that just to ex- start that little journey of self-exploration yeah actually it's kind of funny um it's actually through tiktok i I don't even have tiktok anymore because i spent too much time on there but um i realized that first it was possible to both feel like a girl and feel non-binary at the same time and i didn't really know that that was a thing i didn't know that that was possible i didn't at, at, there was a point where it, i didn't understand what that was and i think there's a lot of people that don't really get it when people use two pronouns but people can both feel like they identify with being a girl but also feel like a non-binary like person and feel that kind of feel more on the non-binary side and that's what really gravitated like i gravitated towards really quickly and i was like oh this makes sense for me because I've had, I've definitely felt a lot of struggles with the way I've presented myself the most, I feel like. And then I started to know, dive more deep into what it really means to be a girl and what it means to be a woman and those kind of ideals and what it really even matters to me. And I kind of realized that I just feel more like a person and that the feminine sides of me is something that's a little bit more personal that isn't necessarily something that is always outward for me. I don't know if that makes sense. I know it's a little confusing. Yeah, that makes total sense. And I think um, hopefully the audience here can understand where you're coming from. Um, As you know, it is a tough thing to research and learn about and feel out. And so that leads me on to a question. So you found it through TikTok, right? So did you're you finding on TikTok um, sway your views on gender norms and has your actual identity swayed your views on gender norms? Um, I think, yeah, definitely. I think through um, different types of social media, especially through TikTok, because there's been, it's a lot more personalized towards me and things that I care about and not just, you know, random things that I have, uh, random things that I have clicked follow on or anything. So um, I think that I definitely have seen a lot more issues being brought up and a lot more different perspectives of like, you know, who should be doing what and not even just uh, what gender should be doing what roles, but just like expectations for people of different genders or people of different body types as well. I have had a lot more um, non-binary representation, which actually allowed me to realize that that's how I feel like. And I feel like there, even in gender norms, there isn't really a spot for non-binary people. Like I find myself walking down, like say even the deodorant aisle. And like, I'm like, I don't, know what to do here like you know there's the norm of the of girls they're supposed to pick the floral scents and they say you know girl and woman all over them and then you go and you look and you see oh dove men and it has all this like musky scents and then there comes the gender role of even what scents are male and female and I'm like I don't what do I do here I'm not sure where I fit here so it's almost even to the aspect where like there isn't even a gender neutral option sometimes. All right. That does raise a good point that there isn't many neutral options in consumerism as, you know, companies may not have done it yet. So you mentioned in our previous conversation before the podcast that you're sort of big on gender assumption and the issue that it arises. Can you explain a bit to the audience what gender assumption is? 
so to me what gender assumption is is when you look at a person and you immediately already assume where they put themselves on the gender spectrum or even for that fact you are putting themselves on their on a gender spectrum for them like you don't allow them to give you their answer. So instead of just walking up to someone who may present femininely and just start using pronouns of she, her, and assuming that they would like you using compliments like hey, or saying things like hey girl, or like saying compliments like queen and things that are inherently feminine, you take a minute and say, hey, what are your pronouns? Are you comfortable with me calling you these things? Like, what, is that okay with you? Instead of just inherently or just going out and assuming what how people want to be talked to. I mean, I definitely get this a lot in public and even in places where I put my pronouns out very openly, people still are always like, hey girl, what's up? And I'm like, again, I put this out there. So like sometimes it's just like, that's another push why people really push to have people put their pronouns in their bio of like on Instagram and other places that you can put it um, so that people don't have to assume to be able to refer to you. It's, you know, it's to be able to make people who are transgender, people who are non-binary, gender queer in any way feel more comfortable so that they don't have to be misgendered or even have a gender put on them that they don't feel is comfortable with them. And so obviously you think it's a big issue at times for non-binary and transgender folks. Um, and you stated that like a thing that can help is like putting people your own pronouns in like um, your Instagram bio, your Twitter bio, etc. Um, so you think everyone should be doing that, right? Yeah, I think that everyone, whether you are cis, whether trans, any, whatever gender you are, what, what person, or unless like, unless it's unsafe for you to do so, like there are definitely some situations where people like, they know their pronouns, but they, it would be unsafe for them to put them out there because of, you know, different situations that they may have, whatever that may be. But I think that if there are people who can, who are comfortable with who they are and they can put their pronouns out there, whether you are cis, trans, or non-binary, you should be putting your pronouns out there so that people can cut down on their own gender assumptions in their own brain and in their speech. All right. And so with gender assumption, if someone walks up to you thinking that you're female and they start off with that, but then you say, hey, blank, uh, I'm, I actually go by they, them, for instance, and they correct themselves, do you think that's okay? But if it's like continually going at it, like, hey, girl, hey, queen, hey, bro, etc. I mean, I think that Honestly, the preferred situation would be that someone comes up to me and asks me, but obviously that doesn't always happen. So, I mean, it's okay if people like misgender me at first, but after a correction, I really would hope that someone would try to, you know, think about it more consciously or, you know, stop themselves or things like that. But the kind of the hope that I have is that people at some point won't just go up to people and look at them and, you know, then start gendering them. They, they kind of have that pause of like, hey, how do you identify whether the person presents whatever way they do, you know? Awesome. And, um, and so I think, what you give there's um a pretty accurate take on how things should hopefully go in the coming future and generations as society you know evolves over time is there anything else you'd like to add to, or say to the audience or the lgbtq plus community i definitely urge not just people in the lgbtq community but everyone even people who think they're cis not even just think they're cis sorry that sounds like people like that people aren't actually cis but i mean like even people who you know think that they're cis or think you're gay or think that you're trans, think you're non-binary, whatever, still try to, you know, be yourself and always try to think about what labels and what things make you comfortable. Like, um, like no matter what your way you express yourself and what way you think you fit in, like always try to think like, hey, how can I feel more comfortable and how can I make others feel more comfortable as well? Um, and always just be open to new ideas and new things. And that's just really the biggest thing is to be open and just to, even if new things come up within yourself or new things come up with others, just try to approach those things with love and with open eyes with for new possibilities.
All right. Thank you for coming on to the podcast. Appreciate it. You've given quite some unique answers and that hopefully the listeners can learn something from or question something that from about themselves personally, you know, and just look into themselves. Um, so thank you for coming on again to everyone listening. Have a lovely day. See you on the next one.